we are back with another video, and we're going to show you the new stuff we put in with the process of putting the robots in. Uh, the other thing I'm going to show you is Trent fixed the pump in the other video. We got that fixed, and we might be hauling a new one. I just want to do a quick shout out to the guys from Edders that are putting the robots in because I've been told that they're uh, watching the videos. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you everyone for commenting, liking, and subscribing. Guys that are working on the robots so far, they've gotten these. The white PVC pipe here is for the chemicals that are used to wash the robot. This is something new from the old robots because the old robots you have to take chemicals from the center alley here and put them in the back of the robot. But now, all I have to do is get it pumped from in there, which is a lot easier to get barrels of chemicals from there into there than it is to get them all the way over this curb and in there. Great hose above that, over there, and then we got it over here too, up there. That's uh, for the electronics for the robots. This PVC pipe that's right here, it runs from there. They haven't completely finished it yet, but it runs there, and it runs over here. That goes, that's the other one here, so that goes all the way into our room over there where the vacuum pumps are. That's for the vacuum, which uh, milks the cows. <laughs> what are you doing over there? <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by two. This is why we can't have nice things. Oh, oh, so that's how the big pi pipes come in here and go into the vacuum pump. Look where they come from. So we'll have some big uh, barrels right here and then, yeah. Where we're at, we're kind of uh, on the band saw the last chunk, which will go from here to in here because this all gets overlapped in here. So I'm working on unbolting these pieces, this right here, so that way we can pull this chunk out of here, and then we'll have to cut cut this off right here, so we get we can have this piece left, and we'll end up on that back. So right now I'm working on tightening these bolts right here so that way this plate is tight here because then that piece right there sits down right here and then this gets welded onto the bottom just like the other one over there you see right there at the edge of my fingertip. And then we'll probably start painting this my dad figures so hopefully that goes better than last night because I went down to our neighbors to, for Saturday night shop net that they have there and the one guy that was there, we were using spray paint, and he dropped the piece of metal that uh, he was painting on a can of primer, and it just sprayed everywhere. I'll show you guys a picture in a second. So hopefully we avoid that and don't stain our floors for the next couple of months in the shop here. This is what happens when you have a... Trying to hook stuff up in the cold and the jacks froze to the ground here. Trying to rock the tractor back and forth to spin it. Come oh. on, big boy, you got her. You're going the wrong way, I think. Yeah, oh, you're going. You sure? Oh, got her hooked up. We only got one casualty. We only got half the jack actually with the jack. The rest uh, decided they wanted to fall off, so Dad's got one blinker working. <laughs>
got everything hooked up and working here. In the fall, we always haul all the liquids out of the pit and dig out the sand that collects at the bottom of the pit too. And so we also haul out in the pit, out of the pit in the middle of the winter like we are right now, just to make sure we are able to make it all the way through winter. Cause if we waited to, all the way till spring to wait till it was dry enough where we could actually haul, the pit would be pretty close to overflowing. So that's why we haul the pit every year during the winter. And it just, we finally got the ground froze hard enough where we could actually haul the pit. So that's what we're doing right now. So dad and I are both running a tanker and what we do to make it so we don't have to climb in and out of the tractor every single load to throttle the uh, green trap, the John Deere up to run the pump. We have a switch like this, a button for up and down. So that what that does is it throttles the tractor up and down because there's an arm in the tractor. I can show you in a sec, but it runs, it, there's an arm that extends the throttle up and then when you hit the down, it throttles it back. So you hit up and away it goes. Throttles the tractor up and then whenever you want to be done, you just hit down and then it throttles it back down. It's a pretty nice system. We got the 44 parked in the shops so that way. That will start up nicely tomorrow so we don't have to have it plugged in for a while. And then we also parked the blade tractor in here because we've been having a few issues with the battery and if we gotta plug it in at least it's in the shop where we got cords everywhere and it's nice and heated so should be one less issue we put some cardboard down here so that way if once this stuff all unthaws we don't have a big mess all over the floor so i think that's about all we're gonna have for the video today so uh thanks for watching and we'll see you next time